ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second annual live strip tool conference. On behalf of Orthman, we would like to extend a very warm welcome to all. We appreciate you taking your time off your busy day and schedules. My name is Brian Nevo, host and founder of the Live Stripto Conference. This is the last episode for the year, and I firstly would like to welcome a couple of people um, live with me today. Uh, I have Peter Prinsloo from Rates area. Um, he's a farmer who's been farming with Northman Strip Tool for the last 12 years. Uh, with me joining, uh, who has been a s soil scientist at the USAD for 32 years and has been a soil lead agronomist at Orthman for 10 years, Mike Peterson. As well, Morning, a everybody. grower from the US, uh, Pat McKnight, thank you for joining us. Uh, he's been a farmer and using Orthman strip tool for about 12 years. So, gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. I really do appreciate it. Um, Mike, I know this is our last episode, and you know, there's going to be a couple of questions, really good questions today. Um, I know Peter has a couple of questions from his side as well. And uh, I think, you know, let me start off with, you know, Peter. Explain to me, what was your initial, you know, your vision on Striptal? What made you look at Striptal? Thanks, Brian. It's a privilege to be here. Uh, the main thing is to use one tool to do all the tillage on the farm. Mm. After harvest, you can Striptal, and right after that, you can plant. There's no other tools needed. If you look at the prices of all the equipment these days and everything you need, all the equipment and tractors and drivers and everyone, um, that's the first thing is to do everything with one tool. Mm. Yes, and, and I know Peter has a couple of images that he'll show you shortly. Um, and and in, in your location, uh, rates area uh, what have you seen is there any changes to to your land any changes when you be that you've been using a strip Orthman strip tool yes there's an enormous change um, the so the soil uh, the, the dirt became soil again okay the life in the soil exploded yeah with the less tillage and less uh, usage of implements that Correct. kill all the diversity and uh, yeah that's the main Earth, thing earthworms and yeah um, and leaving the organic matter yeah came up a lot okay uh, the last two years i used the smart firmer on the planter sure. and the organic matter of each field came up Significantly. Sure. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Pat, just maybe going over to you is, uh, you know, just the same questions. Obviously, you've seen obviously this as well in, in your environment. Uh, I know we across across the water quite a ways, but, um, you know, Mike has been there to you guys, and uh, you've obviously seen the, the same experience as well, right? I guess for us, um, the first uh, um, reason to, to head in the strip till direction was was efficiency. Um, it was just taking us too much time to get over the acres to get the fertilizer uh, put on and and uh, get ready to plant. And so, um, running over about fourteen hundred acres uh, with a few of us on a part time basis, basically, uh, efficiency was a big thing to us. Um, going forward since then, um, th there has been a, a very noticeable and appreciable change in, in the way the soil functions. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's much healthier than it was, uh, once we started this process. 
Um, it's taken poorer parts of the farms and uh, evened them up with, uh, with the better parts of the farms. Uh, we have less areas that drowned out every year. Um, so all in all, it's made us more efficient. It's made us more efficient with the fertilizer um, in the volume that we put on and it's it's improved our soil conditions um which which really in all honesty took a period of about three to four years before we really started to see the the uh the those types of benefits but uh since then uh, soil health has improved um our efficiency has improved and the bottom line has improved yeah and what type of crops do you guys you know the main type of crops that you guys use in that area, hybrids, corn and soybeans. Okay, and and Peter, we have the same. Is it? Yeah. Uh, is there any specific hybrids that you guys, or just a standard? No, no. Okay. It's just a standard. Yeah. All right. I think Peter has got a couple of pictures that he wants to share with us. Um, you know, we can. He can share with us and just talk about um, Peter. Maybe you can just explain oh, a little bit there. That's only a picture of corn uh, emerging at exact the same time, mm. and that you can only get with a precise seed bed. Mm. And you can see that each kernel emerged at in within 12 hours. Sure. And that is the key to good yield correct and the row spacing in the you know there's no late emerges or anything no 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 um, we have a little bit problem with following the strips because i'm not on rtk okay. so you have to drive the tractor i'm the tractor driver that plants <laughs> and my brother is driving the strip tool yes. so at the end of the day you're tired because you had to concentrate to plant straight yes um, especially on contours to stay in the strip and you can't use your GPS like planting contours because it's a drone planter and a lift strip tool mm. so you have to compensate with the tractor to stay exactly in the middle of the strip sure. so it's hard work to plant precise but you can see it works um, we started integrating rye and oats and everything, and that makes a huge difference in the organic matter in the soil. And mm. I always say to people, we farm with carbon. The more carbon in the soil, the better your soil is. Correct. So, yeah. Um, and have you seen any improvement since you've been using the Altman Striptal um, in your yields, profits? Yes, definitely, definitely. Um, yields n never went backwards. Okay. There's a lot of guys that's saying you can do anything, but you mustn't go backwards on your yield. Yes. And that I can say, we just went forward with the with the with the yield. Yeah. And obviously, that's another image of you know with soya beans and. Yeah. All right. But the water infiltration is a lot better when you have cover on the ground. Correct. And the more coverage you have. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Pat, uh, you know, you've, you've been using Striptal for a while as well. And, you know, Mike, you can climb in here. And I don't know if there's a couple of questions that Mike has. Is, you know, maybe just to come back on that, the same topic, you know, that I asked Peter is, have you have you seen any um, increase in yields and, and, and any changes in your profits and that? Um, I wouldn't say that there has been a uh, a drastic increase in yield. Uh, the most positive effect on yield that I guess that I've seen uh, consistently is is taking the poorer parts of the farms and bringing them more even with the better parts of the farms. Um, we have had over the last 12 years increases in yields all across the board. Um, and, and the strip tiller has played a definite role in that. 
Um, but we have better hybrids. We have better fertilizer products. Sure. We better, have better irrigation management. So there's a lot of things that play into that. Um, but I can say with exact certainty that the poorer parts of the farms have become much more even with the higher producing parts of the farms. Um, sometimes some fairly drastic increases, you know, 20, 30, 40 bushels per acre, which is a, a substantial amount. Um, but from a profitability standpoint, um, just the efficiency alone, going from three trips across the field before we plant to one, uh, saves a lot of diesel fuel, saves a lot of time, saves a lot of hours on tractors. Sure. And uh, then you couple that with, uh, uh, we can be uh, so much more accurate and efficient with our fertility placement that uh, fertility costs have uh, decreased uh, a little bit too. So you, you add all those three things together and and it's it's definitely a much more pro profitable enterprise than what was happening before. Yeah. So Pat, I know that um, you've been doing this um, with uh, Kevin and I was wondering whether or not you might be able to express what you're doing now on your own land, um, how you've seen the changes there on your, uh, your own farm. Well, at home, this this spring was the second year of strip tillage at home, and um, um, the quality of the seed bed created by the one tripper is is uh, much improved from last year. Um, we're starting even just in in a second second pass over with the strip tillage a better uh, a better quality seed bed, a more consistent seed bed, and uh, and these are some fairly heavy soils, so they're uh, they can be wet and difficult to work with. Um, so I was, I was a little bit surprised how well the one tripper worked this year uh, after only in essence, two passes with it uh, as compared to, um, you know, the 12 years prior, um, some of those changes took more along the lines of three to four years. So Peter, do you happen to have, it appears from <clears throat> your pictures that you have some fairly sandy soils, is that correct? Yes, yes, we have sandy soils, but not as sand as the most people. But uh, you can't imagine how the organic matter in the soil um, starts to uh, develop. develop. And the soil became darker if you look at the soil. Uh, over the years, each time you dig a, a profile pit in the soil, you can see it becomes darker and darker. Hmm. Yes. Um, Peter, just maybe another question is, you know, do you do you put fertilizer down with with the one tripper? Yes. Um, liquid. Liquid. Liquid fertilizer, yeah. And at different depths, or do you just put it at one certain depth? No, one certain depth. Okay. But there's a lot of stuff going uh, uh, on in our minds to change a little bit to two depths. And um, the other thing is we usually uh, broadcast uh, ammonium sulfate in the uh, pre-season, mm -hmm. just before planting. We never uh, uh, use the strip tiller in winter time. And that's another thing we want to try and start doing a little bit in advantage to have more space to plant in the summer or you can work it ahead of the planter because sometimes the planter is, or the strip tiller is holding you back. Yes. You can plant a little bit faster mm. if you do it just uh, the planter following the strip till at the same day. Correct, yeah. 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 And and obviously you've seen, you know, the water infiltration are much better as well, um, you know, with you guys been using the Orthman strip tool yes. as well, right? Yes, you can't believe at the neighbor's fields how the water runs off and in our fields there's nothing. Yeah. It looks like it rained le the off of what <laughs> the neighbors can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mike, I don't know, you... you, you You've experienced this obviously all over the place, and 
you know, I don't know if there's some other question that you have from your end. Well, <clears throat> one of the things that, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I'd like to ask both Pat and Peter that um, are you guys finding that uh, your, not only your timing of uh, being able to <clears throat> plant, but also the timing of when you fertilize is, is fitting what the crop needs are. Um, so Pat, you want to answer that? And then Peter can. Well, that's the goal. Um, uh, we live uh, in an area that can get kind of wet in the spring and we strip till in the spring. And so uh, that can be pretty challenging. Um, but at the same time, um, like Peter had mentioned, uh, there's a lot of times the strip tiller and the planter are in the same field. They might only be two or three passes apart, uh, whatever is, is uh, necessary to keep both operations going. Um, I would say by switching to, to strip till, um, we've rethought basically every portion of a fertility plan and, and uh, basically reversed a lot of things we did in the past as far as nitrogen management, phosphorus management, um, potassium management. And uh, that all boils down to the, to the efficiency end of it um, by placing the immobile nutrients with the strip tiller. Um, we, you can cut those costs fairly, fairly uh, substantially in a, in a shorter period of time. Um, and it also allows us to to uh, fertilize for the crop instead of fertilizing for the field. Um, uh, putting fertility where plants have no access to it, you know, used to be the way everybody did it. And uh, we've gotten a lot smarter, obviously. And, and just that efficiency alone has, has saved a substantial amount of money. Thanks. How about you, Peter? Yeah, it's basically the same that Pat says. Um, yeah, to put the most fertilizer in the strip is the best. Uh, this year we struggled a little bit with, uh, we normally do a little bit of, uh, of the, the, the nitrogen afterwards, two times. But then we brought broadcast CA in nitrogen afterwards. But this year we struggled to drive in the fields with all the rain. Mm. So... Um, we don't know how many of that fertilizer really worked. Correct. Yeah. Because the, the one time we fertilized a, a field, the, we had, I think, 50 or 60 millimeters of rain right after the spreader. So maybe some, we had some runoff. Uh, I want to try in the new season to use wide drops a little bit. Dries, that was yes, yesterday. Mm. He started yeah. Uh, talking about talking it about it and trying it out and I think that's the the goal yeah. to put it next to the roots where the where it can correct work immediately and uh, water w when it rains helps to take it into the into the soil correct I know Peter has another two images uh, that he wants to show and then you know just going on this uh, you know this image that you've seen here uh, peter maybe you can just explain. oh that's just to say we struggled this year by with the wet year to stay into the into the rows with the sprayer mm. because it was so wet and the sprayer slips into the strip and then you you struggle to get out of it again because it's very wet into the strip. And we had to put duels on the sprayer. And that helped a lot uh, because the backside of the sprayer is very heavy and it slips into the strips. Mm. Uh, so yeah, that, that helped a lot. And uh, the other slide. And uh, what is your population, if I may ask, what, what, what was the population that you planted there? 250,000 okay. plants per hectare, yeah. Do you guys plant about the same uh, path? Obviously, it will be different in acres. 
Uh, it's about a hundred thousand. Uh, on soybeans, um, it varies, um, probably anywhere from one hundred forty thousand plants per acre to one hundred seventy-five thousand, on average. Okay. And you guys have uh, have you had the same where the sprayer you know comes into the strips in wet seasons. Uh, that's generally not an issue for, for us, um, just because um, we probably have a little bit wider row spacing. Our uh, center to center on the rows is 36 inches, okay. um, which gives us quite a bit more room. Uh, and then also using control traffic. So the sprayer generally runs on a, on a previous pass from the tractor, uh, has helped that situation. Um, I, that is a problem with, with strip till having the, the sprayer fall off into the strip and not want to climb out. Um, but there's quite a few ways to mitigate that and get, get around it. Um, in Western Nebraska, I live in Nebraska In Western Nebraska, almost every field is sprayed at an angle, um, a slight angle from the strips and they have noticed no yield loss. Um, and as compared to driving over a row for, quarter of a mile um, but there's control traffic helps um, we do a lot of cultivation um, as part of our weed control program so that that helps from the soil up in between the strips uh, so there's there's quite a few different ways around that particular issue yeah yeah and uh, have you guys have you guys you know do you feel that you're more efficient uh, you know, with your fertilizer program, uh, when you're using a strip till system? Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're more, definitely more efficient and you, you can uh, put it where the plant needs it. Sure. Uh, just in front of his mouth. Yeah. You're feeding it pretty much. Yeah, yeah. No. And... Uh, do you see any other types of savings that, you know, on using this, this strip tool approach? Yeah, definitely. The, the biggest saving is on labor, and cost, equipment cost, tractor hours. The tractor that pulls the strip tiller is a 2012 model and it's got 2,000 hours now. Sure. Uh, it's diesel. the only thing you do. Um, yeah, a lot of savings. Yeah, and, and diesel, your guys' diesel costs, has, has that come down? Or? I think it's about half, yeah. Sure. And you've been doing it for 12 years? Yeah. 11, 11 12 years? Yeah. Pat, yeah. and, and, you, and at your, your end? Uh, similar. Um, our, our, our fertilizer efficiencies on immobile nutrients have probably equated to somewhere in the neighborhood of a 20 to 30 percent um, savings on cost per acre, um, and then you couple that with with uh, with the hours on the tractors sure. and the time. And truthfully, we've we've learned a lot, you know, over many years of doing this that uh, the uh, the practice of heavy tillage actually destroys soil. Yeah. And uh, so the one thing we can't measure is what's the improvement to our soil work. Um, and that's something that, you know, I don't know if we'll ever be able to put a number to it. Um, but yeah. yeah, organic matters have increased. Soil structure is better. Uh, water infiltration rates have increased. Um, all these things coupled together make for a much healthier soil environment. And I don't know, uh, that's probably the one thing we won't be able to put a number to as far as, as uh, increased profitability. The soil is, is definitely more efficient. And yeah. uh, that's, that's a big part of it that we probably can't measure. Yeah, no, definitely. Mike, uh, I know we're coming to the end here now, and I don't know if, if you maybe have a question or two on your end. Uh, before we close, you know, close off this day. Um, no, I have a couple comments. Um, I know that uh, from the pictures that uh, Peter has shown that uh, 
you can tell the, the plants are a lot more robust. Uh, they appear that they have really good color. So that tells me that uh, even though it's a little uh, uh, not measurable, but color does tell you whether or not the plant has done a good job of taking up its nutrients. Hmm. Uh, it, it's somewhat subjective, but as you look across this soybean field, that uh, the picture that's on the screen right now, um, boy, those are neat and clean and uniform and they're doing a really good job. Have you noticed, uh, I, uh, first to Pat, have you noticed in your soybean fields, the, the later pod development has really improved? And Peter, then you can answer that. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're producing higher bushel soybeans now than we ever have in the past. I, I don't know how much of that we can equate to the strip tiller. Um, because we're doing so many different things now than we used to on soybeans. We have better varieties. We're using fertility on soybeans, which nobody used to do. Um, but the efficiency of, of ground preparation and fertilizer application is still there with the soybeans as it is on corn. Um, but there's been so many changes to, to how we treat soybeans, if you will, um, other than just going out there and planting them and walking away. Uh, it, it's hard to say with any certainty how much of an effect the strip tiller has had on, on our in, increases in soybean yields. Um, you know, we were stuck in, in that 65 to 75 bushel range for many, many years. And, and now we're 85 to 95, which is, uh, you know, but I don't know how much of that could be, uh, attributed just to the strip tiller. Oh, you, uh, you want to throw a whole lot towards it, Pat. <laughs> uh, Peter, for you, what have you noticed in <coughs> your soybean yields? Have they improved uh, over the last five years? Have they improved uh, significantly for you? Uh, Mike, yes, I think they improved a little bit. Uh, <coughs> but the last few years we struggled to plant in the perfect planting window mm. our seasons are late each each year the season is late and this year we struggled a lot because we had we started wet the soil was wet from the winter and then when it the first rain came it keep on raining yeah and we struggled to plant and plant late but yes there's definitely late pots developing and um, yeah there, I think there's definitely an increase in pot development like you say uh, in the striptal system. Uh, as I said yesterday Peter I mean it's a little bit of a tease I know that normally you guys don't have a whole lot of uh, excess moisture so uh, it's fun to hear uh, in a manner of speaking there's a little bit of a a growl that oh my we were wet this year uh, I would yeah. think that uh, um, more often than not like where I live uh, I live in Colorado which is in the rain shadow effect of the Rocky Mountains and uh, if we get a wet spring um, most everybody's saying I'm glad I got wet boots but <laughs> it's okay yeah 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 I'm sure it's the same yeah yeah you never moan and groans about too much rain yeah you can make a plan but it's when it's dry you can't make a plan correct yeah that's right that's yeah. right yeah. very good uh, <clears throat> uh i'm uh i'm pleased to uh that both of you guys are uh, about the same amount of time in using uh the one tripper and what the successes have been for you knowing that uh, uh you've improved your soil quite a bit then also uh, that uh, your, your efficiencies jumped up. Along with that, um, you guys probably got a little bit more free time than you used to have where you don't have to be sitting on the tractor until late hours of the night, uh, even though sometimes you have to. Yep. So uh, congratulations that the strip till system is doing what you like it to do and uh, I'm sure that you're looking forward that it's going to be something that you use long into the future. Yeah, I think so. 
Um, Peter and uh, Pat, you know, before we close off, I don't know if there's something that you guys would like to share uh, before we close off, you know, your opinion and, and you know, to, to other growers out there, you know, what is your experience and how do you feel about that you've been using a Northman strip tool for the last 12 years? Well, to my knowledge, it's the best strip tool machine there is. There's no problem with residue management. You can plant through a blanket if you want to. Mm. It just goes through. Like I told you before we started, um, I thought we can modify a ripper that we had on the farm and make our own thing. <laughs> and my, dad's, my dad said, there's no way. Yeah. This thing is built over 25 years. In planting time, there's no, no uh, time to modify and... And change. And yeah, and yeah. change on it. You know it's right and do the right thing. Uh, yeah, and to other farmers, it will work. Hmm. There's n no doubt about it that it won't work. Uh, a friend of mine said he won't do it. It's it's not a it doesn't work deep enough. And one day he came at visiting me, and we were planting uh, sorghum for the cattle. And when we dug the seeds for a meter to see how many seeds there are we found 11 earthworms sure. in that one meter. Wow. And the year after that, my friend has got an oarsman as well. There we go. <laughs> yeah. No, thanks, Peter. I, I really appreciate that. And um, Pat, uh, you know, maybe something from your end, you know, what, you, what, what can you share and just explain to everyone out there? Well, much like Peter, um, I have yet to find a condition that I can't run it. Um, and that's, that's very beneficial. Um, and I was thinking about it last night. Um, I was actually running, running the one tripper last night and, um, uh, our particular machines probably got a little bit north of 20,000 acres on it or so. Uh, now granted it sits inside all the time when it's not being used and it gets well taken care for. Um, but. I would be hard pressed to say that we have spent between two and $2,500 in parts uh, over the 12 year life of this machine and, and sure. 20 plus thousand acres. So uh, the cost of maintenance, cost of ownership after the fact has been, um, been, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to say it other than it's just fantastic. Um, there aren't too many tools that I can say that about. Um, and it just works no matter what the condition it just works i don't have to spend a lot of time setting it i don't have to spend a lot of time monkeying around with changing things we just hook up to it grease it go to work yeah. and there's an efficiency in that also uh, so uh, it's been a great tool it's been a durable tool um, it does everything we want it to um, and uh, i've told a lot of people you just you just pretty much have to pry it from our cold dead hands is the way I would look at it. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you very much. Um, I really do appreciate the time. Mike Peterson, once again, thank you for this opportunity to be live with us. Uh, and just given your experience, you know, the, what's it, 42 years being an, an agronomist, maybe a bit longer yeah. than that. Yep. So... I do appreciate it. I'm sure everyone else does, you know, all the information that you share with us. And, um, you know, before we close off, please feel free to comment, like our page, share it. And lastly, thank you to, to uh, ProAgri, Lazar, um, the audiovisual guys, and as well for Johnson's uh, workwear clothing. Uh, I really do appreciate everyone's support this year and um, let's hope it's going to be a good season for you guys in the U.S. and for us here in South Africa for the year ahead. And uh, I wish you all well and we'll see you guys next year in the third season. Thank you very much. Out here, when you've got a problem, you need a solution. And when there's a need, there's an opportunity. 
This farm has been here for over 50 years. Orthman Manufacturing started on this land, in this barn, and with one man convinced there's got to be a better way. What started with the Orthman family farm has grown into 50 years of farming innovation and quality, and a manufacturer helping growers be more efficient around the world. Just because something's been done before doesn't mean it's been done right. And that's where Orthman found the passion for innovation. And the spark of an idea changed an entire industry. We understand the power and performance you need and the excellence and quality you deserve. The smallest of details are important to us. Shapes, corners, edges, every last detail. There's a standard of excellence, and we take pride in setting the bar and pushing beyond it. Using the latest in design technology, Orthman is continuing a 50-year tradition of innovation for farmers. From the basics to the breakthroughs, like hollow structural tubing that has now become a standard in the industry. The durability and long life of Orthman row crop cultivators, our innovative stack fold toolbar technology, and the common sense utility of the track tiller. Orthman is constantly going one step further, leading the way by developing innovative GPS guidance systems or the unparalleled performance of the One Tripper Precision Strip Till Machine, a machine that pioneered strip tillage around the world. And the tradition of Orthman's innovation doesn't end there. No matter what challenges lay ahead, Orthman will continue to lead the way. Your common problems have a unique solution. That's Orthman. Now let's get to work.